Wuhan in China is considered ground zero of the global coronavirus pandemic. But a German geneticist may have debunked this theory. He traced the lineage of the coronavirus and made a surprising discovery. Plus, we'll delve into long COVID. What causes the known symptoms remains uncertain still, but the secret could lie in the virus's impact on our blood cells. Welcome to Tomorrow Today, the science program on DW. Blood flow plays a vital role in our tissues getting enough oxygen. In order for blood cells to travel through our blood vessels, they have to be extremely flexible and capable of changing shape. This enables them to pass through the tiniest blood vessels called capillaries, like the ones seen here in our lungs. A team of researchers in Germany discovered that examining red blood cells could be key in learning what causes certain symptoms of long COVID. This is Erlangen University Hospital in Germany, the workplace of Bettina Hohlberger. She's an ophthalmologist and molecular medicine specialist trying to unravel the mystery of long COVID. Her team's focus is on the delayed effects the virus has on blood flow. Together with a colleague from the ICU, I wondered if the coronavirus also affects the innermost layer of the blood vessels. The idea was relatively new back then, and there was little research on it. Holberger and her team have been taking a closer look at capillaries, the smallest and thinnest blood vessels in our vascular system. To do so, they use a special camera to photograph the eyes of long COVID patients. The blood vessels in the eye are structured just like those elsewhere in the body. This allows us to use the changes we see in the eye as a reference point for the entire body. And sure enough, Holbecker found out that a lot of COVID patients have blood flow problems in their capillaries. The blood flow of a healthy eye is seen here in white. On the right is the eye of a long COVID patient with significantly restricted blood flow. The experts in Erlangen have a theory about what causes these circulatory disorders. The researchers also work with scientists from the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Light at Erlangen. The joint teams are among the first worldwide to use the deformability of blood cells to detect illnesses. The cells have to deform in order to pass through the smallest capillaries. When they're no longer capable of doing that, that could be an indication for an illness. A drop of blood is all that's required to determine whether that's the case with a particular patient. Biologist Martin Kreta pumps blood through a special chip with tiny channels that are thinner than a human hair. He films the process with a high-speed camera, which reveals how much the blood cells change shape when they pass through the artificial capillaries. And the analysis shows that the blood of long COVID patients contains cells that are unnaturally rigid. While some individual red blood cells behave normally and change shape, others remain stiff and round. Our working hypothesis now is that the lack of deformability in the cells of long COVID patients can explain the circulatory disorders because the cells are simply unable to pass through the body's thinnest capillaries. But what causes this effect? The researchers have an idea about that as well. And again, blood plays an important role here. Specific autoantibodies are found in the blood of long COVID patients. And these immune system molecules can have a detrimental impact on the function of our body's cells, including blood cells. Since these antibodies swim around the blood of the entire body, they can help explain many different symptoms. That might be increased tiredness, the brain fog caused by blood flow changes in the brain, the circulation changes in the muscles that cause chronic fatigue. So a host of symptoms can be explained as a result of the cell changes caused by the autoantibodies. More studies and data will be needed, however, before the diagnostic procedure can be more widely used. Nevertheless, the researchers in Erlangen have already taken an important step. They've administered the yet-to-be-approved medicine BC-007 to long COVID patients. 
The drug is being developed by a company in Berlin to improve the circulation of people with heart problems. Etanolizim BC007 is an aptamer, a small DNA molecule that binds to these antibodies, neutralizes them, and helps the body to discharge them again. Holberger has also tried out BC007 on a small number of long COVID patients. Among them is Axel Nagat. His symptoms built up gradually over time. At first, it was just a case of being a bit scatterbrained. But then it got worse from each week to the next. My sense of taste started acting up, and I had issues keeping my balance. Plus, I was often tired. I even fell asleep at work sometimes. Bettina Holberger administered him just one infusion of BC-007 with rapid success. I wasn't quite so tired, and I felt better with each excessive week. After three weeks, I was pretty much back in tip-top shape and felt fine. The researchers in Erlangen noticed similar improvements in their research. The blood flow in their patients' eyes improved, and there were no more autoantibodies in the blood. There were also other benefits. What we noticed in the patients who took part in our research was that their cells gradually started moving in the right direction again in terms of their deformability. We really weren't expecting results like this, with symptoms completely disappearing among our patients. The one big hope we did have was that changes related to blood flow issues would improve. But patients even regaining their sense of taste was totally unexpected. A clinical study is underway in Erlangen to take a more in-depth look at the effectiveness of BC-007. It also aims to find out whether the medication that helped Axel Nagat can help all other long COVID patients too. After the coronavirus was transmitted to humans, it quickly started mutating. Each subsequent mutation has been given a letter of the Greek alphabet. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and now Omicron have been the most important variants so far. The variants occur because the genes or the RNA of the virus changed, which altered the spike protein on the virus. In the case of Omicron, the nucleocapsid protein inside the virus has changed as well. A German geneticist traced the lineage of the coronavirus. In the process, he found out it may have a different origin than many previously thought. The coronavirus has had health authorities scrambling to track and isolate exposed and infected people since the pandemic began. But the virus is elusive and despite testing, slips through undetected. Often it's impossible to trace. If trails could be detected in time, its spread could be stopped much faster. That's what has geneticist Michael Forster hard at work. Here at the Institute of Clinical Molecular Biology in Kiel in northern Germany, he's researching lineages, not of people, but cells. His approach is to analyze the viral lineages of COVID-19 to understand its origin and the way it spreads. He also uses this method with cancer diagnoses. For this, the DNA of cancer cells must be decoded. After sequencing our collected cancer cells, we sort them using a networking analysis to observe the progression of the disease. So which cells diverged first, which mutated first, and which followed later. Michael Foster uses marbles to show how the network analysis works. As cancer cells spread through the body, they mutate into new variants. This is shown by different colored marbles. He's arranging the cells in a lineage based on their mutations. This helps to show how they can be targeted during cancer treatment. So can his networking trace the seemingly chaotic spread of coronaviruses worldwide using their genetic origins? With corona, we have a virus producing about two new mutations every month. 
Using this network analysis method, the evolution of variants can be simulated using the same mathematics as we do with the cancer. Michael Forster enlisted his brother Peter Forster, also a geneticist at Cambridge University, to help. It's been a family affair. We knew we were in a race against time because the speed at which the pandemic was spreading wasn't going to stop. The brothers collected all the genetic data from the first 160 cases of COVID-19 worldwide. Their analysis could determine where the virus originated. So we used the genetics of the virus as the groundwork rather than the chronological sequence of samples. In the end, it could be pure coincidence that the first sequence sample of this virus was found in Wuhan. But to trace the true origin, the Foster brothers needed one crucial piece of information, the ancestor of the coronavirus from which all later variants evolved. A virologist from Wuhan, Jizing Li, has also been tracing the origins of coronaviruses. She was labeled Batwoman from her work studying bats throughout China since the first corona pandemic in 2002. Bats are known to be reservoir hosts of viruses with the potential to trigger epidemics in humans. And she was on the right trail. In 2013, she discovered a virus almost identical to the pandemic variant in the southern Chinese province of Yunnan. She sequenced and published its genome. The carriers? The Chinese horseshoe bat. The virus likely jumped to humans from bats who served as intermediate hosts. Using this data, the Fosters could piece together a lineage of SARS-CoV-2. They were able to uncover a network of relationships between coronavirus variants worldwide from the early phases of the pandemic. This showed that the coronavirus from Wuhan was closely related to coronaviruses that appeared in the southern Chinese provinces of Yunnan and Guangdong. The virus variant in southern China, the green marbles, was the closest, most primordial to the virus from the bats. The dominant variant in Wuhan, the blue marbles, was a later mutation. For Michael Foster, this is proof that the pandemic started in southern China and not in Wuhan. Today, FOSTA's network method can also be used to understand the current spread of new variants across the globe. This single infection chain, shown in blue, are tourists who returned from high-risk areas. When they tested positive, it was first suspected to be the dangerous Indian Delta variant. But it actually turned out to be an alpha variant, the British variant, which as the network mapping shows, was acquired in their local surroundings. Communications with health authorities confirmed this. The Foster brothers' networking approach could help authorities quickly trace the origins of local clusters and stop the spread via quarantine measures. But are the virus lineages alone sufficient? I believe that for fighting to bring the pandemic under control in the future, a concrete plan is needed, a plan of action comparable to how the military prepares for certain situations. That would make this networking method an efficient tool to trace the origin from just a few cases. For a fighting chance at beating a global pandemic, it might just take some unconventional approaches and ideas. What do we know about the Omicron variant of COVID-19?